So there are 30 Cyberpunk 2077 iconic weapons for V's apartment wall collection and in this video guys I bring you a complete guide on how to get each one for the people out there who want this collection filled. How's it going guys my name is DPJ and if you do enjoy the video leaving a like really helps out and if you like what you see and want to see more be sure to subscribe. So V's mega building apartment is home to his stash in which you can store certain iconics which will appear on his three walls. Today I will guide you into getting each and every iconic for this wall collection. Now obviously be warned this video will contain major storyline spoilers. Now everything will be time stamped below I will try and do them in order in which you can obtain them but below the timestamps will be in wall order, left, middle and right, just in case there's a specific one you are chasing. Also keep in mind if you have missed one of these iconics, there's a chance the black market vendor who comes with the Phantom Liberty DLC may have them for you, which we will cover at the end. Okay, so let's get into it guys and we have the Nihan. So this is a iconic which is obtainable from the highest mission real early on. The Nihan is obtained from Sabiro's body, so do not miss this one. Next up guys, we have the Satori Katana. This one comes out of the same mission of the heist, so not long after you've looted Sabiro for that Nihan. Uh, T-Bug, you'll lose connection with T-Bug just before she loses connection with you. She will open the double doors for you to escape, but if you don't take this route and if you go upstairs to the helipad area as you'll see me doing on screen now guys, you'll be confronted by two security guards, take these dudes out, go to the vehicle, open it up and you'll find this iconic waiting for you. For you. Okay, so next up, people, we have Jackie's very own pistols. Now, these are pronounced in a way I cannot pronounce them, but I'll try it for your guys' entertainment anyway. I think it says a large Hangona Dorado or something like that. Uh, but either or, guys, these are Jackie's own personal weapons. And where to get these guys during the end of the highest mission? Well, Obviously, Jackie meets his unfortunate demise. Delamain asks you where you want to send his body. Now, I'm not sure what the other two options mean in this regard, but just select send it to his family. Now, not long after this, Mama Wells will get in contact with you about basically having a wake for Jackie. This triggers the side mission called Heroes. So upon you going here guys and doing heroes, you go to the El Coyote Kojo, which you're seeing right here on the map. When you go inside here, you will speak to Jackie's mom. She will give you a garage key for Jackie's lockup. Once you go here guys, you'll speak with Misty. You can clear this dialogue out and just simply rush back. Once you get back guys, there will be a ceremony going down for Jackie. You need to progress past this part upon you doing this guys. What I did was, I mean, I tried going outside of this actual bar and skipping time by a few days. That did not work. What I did was I went back to Jackie's garage. I skipped time here, then went back and where that altar is, Jackie's two pistols are there for you to grab. So yes, do what you got to do guys and go get this weapon. You also get Jackie's amazing bike for doing this at the same time. So definitely worth your time in doing this. So next up guys, we have the plan B. This is Dexter Deshaun's very own pistol so how you get this thing guys is you have to wait until you complete the mission of love like fire this is the last mission within act one upon you doing this people you go to dexter's body where it's found right here on the map and simply just grab this weapon it's that simple Thank you. 
Okay, so next up, guys, we have the Aretta. Now, this is the Fermo Katana, and this one is found during the disaster piece mission where you go in search of Evelyn. This is found right near the furnace as you make your way down. Next up guys, we have the Butcher's Cleaver. So this is found during the mission of Map Tan Plan. This one guys is found in Roland's Butcher's Shop after Playside finishes butchering the chicken. Simply just grab this after this interaction. Next up guys we have Sasquatch's Hammer. This one is obtained from the end of the I Walk the Line main stone mission where you actually meet and can fight Sasquatch. I think previously you had to fight her and beat her to get this. Now if you can sneak around her you can simply pick up this iconic from behind her and progress on further. But that choice is yours when you get to this point. Next up guys we have the Jinchu Meru Katana, I believe this actually stands for the loyal one. 
Okay, so during the main quest after the prologue, you'll come to a mission called Play It Safe. This mission consists of you working with Takamura. The mission will consist of you having to take out snipers and then going on to find a net runner. Upon finding the net runner, you'll be confronted by a boss called Sandeu Oda. This is the dude who beholds a nice bunch of legendaries and an epic iconic sword. So take him down. Now upon you taking him out, you are asked to spare his life. Doing so or not doesn't change the outcome with the loot you can grab from him. So do what you have to do and take him down. Next up guys we have the Mox Shotgun. So the Mox Shotgun is given to you upon you completing Judy's side missions, the main mission of Pyramid Song. Now the build up to this mission starts after you complete the missions of Double Life and Map Tanpalan. These are main story missions. So completing these missions unlocks a side mission called Both Sides Now. Upon you completing this mission, the next one is called X Factor. Again guys, complete this mission. You then guys have another mission called Talking About A Revolution. These are all duty side missions by the way. This can take a few days in game though to pop up so skip time if you want to rush this thing. So again here guys you need to progress past this mission. You'll then unlock another mission called Pisces. Again guys you need to progress past this one too. And the final mission to reap this reward is called Pyramid Song. Now it doesn't matter if you're a male V or a female V looking to romance Judy. Once you get this mission done guys, she will give you this shotgun. So if you're a female V and you did romance her after this mission is completed, she will message you saying she left the weapon on the kitchen cabinet for you. If you didn't romance her, the weapon will be left on a counter for you. It's as simple as this people. Next up guys we have the overwatch. So the overwatch is given to you by Pan Am during a mission called Riders on the Storm. Okay so to initiate that actual Riders on the Storm quest you first have to meet Pan Am and it all starts within the main story mission of Ghost Town. This is I believe the first time you actually speak with Pan Am. So completing Ghost Town and where you actually get to work with Pan Am triggers a mission called Lightning Breaks. Continue on with this mission guys until it's completed. The next one you'll have is called Life During Wartime. Upon you completing this, if you wait a few days in game, Pan Am will then call you. This sets up the mission of Riders Under Storm, in which you get to meet Pan Am and go to work. Upon you completing this mission guys, she rewards you this Overwatch Sniper at the very end. Please take care of her. She served me well. Putting her in good hands, Pan Am. I know. So, uh, thank you. Once again. Glad I could help. Glad I did. Take care of yourself. You too, Pan Am. Next up, guys, we have the Bay Ching. Chung. Now this actually comes in the form of a crafting spec, but it is one super powerful weapon. So to actually get this guys, you need to complete one of the game's endings where you kill and defeat Adam Smasher. Upon you looting his body and getting the access token, you can come to this point on a map guys, which is basically a locked up stash. If you come here, loot this room with this access token, you can get this crafting spec, craft it and place it in your stash and it will appear on your wall.
Next up, guys, we have the Maloria. This is Johnny's personal pistol. Okay, so this weapon is given to you via a mission called Chipping In. This is a side mission that will pop up after doing four of the main story missions of Automatic Love, Transmission, Life During Wartime and Search and Destroy. At the end of each of these missions, you will have dialogue with Johnny. This is the important part. You have to select the right dialogue choices where you befriend him. So pick the obvious dialogue choices which would no doubt bring the two of you closer together. Okay, so once you have that chipping in mission, towards the end of chipping in, you meet Grayson. Now it's important here that you do not take this dude out. But Grayson is the one who hands you over this amazing pistol, aka Johnny's pistol. Next up guys, we have the Arch Angel. So the Arch Angel is another weapon which is tied to that chipping in mission. In the end, this one is given to you by Kerry Uridine, but you need to get to that point first. So within that chipping in mission, you also get Johnny's pistol as I've just covered. But if you use the timestamps here, I will quickly explain again. So the Arch Angel is given to you by Kerry Uridine in a mission called A Like Supreme but you have to select the right dialogue choices to get to this point. So there are four main campaign missions of automatic love, transmission, life during wartime and search and destroy. At the end of each of these missions, you will have dialogue with Johnny. Here, select the dialogue options to befriend him. This will open up another mission called, well, it's a side mission and it's called Chipping In. Here, towards the end of this mission, you meet Grayson. Here, whatever you do, do not kill him. Here, you will retrieve Johnny's pistol. From this point guys you make a deal with Grayson, here it's important to make the right dialogue choices and select the dialogue option of you got lucky today. He will give you a key to a container which when you open up it's got Johnny's Porsche inside. The mission then progresses where you take Johnny to his grave. Here you need to do as I do on screen now, select the same dialogue options and basically befriend Johnny Silverhand in every way possible. So that's how it is. Nothing here at all. What did you expect? Headstones, flag and flowers? No. Nah. I, I don't know. A marker. Something. Anything. We'll figure something out. Better now? A bit. But let's say it was my real grave. What would you write? Here lies Johnny Silverhand. Night City Legend. Sounds good. But what does it really mean? What did I achieve? Shouted chipping in to a bunch of angry, pimply kids. Give those kids hope. Suits couldn't buy everything. I remember what I thought on stage. That even if they all died for their ideals, it'd be worth it. But when I look at you... Listen, I realize I fucked up a lot of things. Either let down or used every last person who gave me their trust. Blind, selfish bastard that I was. But I've managed one thing for now. Not to fuck this up. What we have. It's been a long, bumpy road, but we made it. Most people I thought were my friends. They couldn't even stand to be in the same room with me. You're fucking closest to me by a long shot. There, 24-7. And yet, you don't seem to hate my living guts. You were a real dickwipe at first. You sort of deserved it. Remember we 
thinking of it, Victor's not knowing about me. I'm seeing things. I'm scared. Then moaning at Misty's about how you didn't want to die. Remember you whining for smokes in the middle of the night? Complaining about not being able to kill me? Never thought we'd make it this far. You said you let your friends down. Did you mean Rogue? Rogue, Alt, Carrie, Santiago. Not all's lost yet. At least with Rogue. Can't pretend nothing's changed over 50 years. Can't just insert myself into her life. Smash your bits really got to her. I don't think. Might be right. She was acting weird. You ought to talk to her. You know, did promise her I'd take her to the movies long, long ago. Good idea. Call her for me? Ask if she's free some night? Thing is, you'd have to surrender control. Again. Yeah. I'll call her. Okay. That's Delta. Nothing to see here after all. Worth coming out all the same? Absolutely. Thanks, V. Of all the heads I could have popped up in, hella glad it was yours. From here, you open up another mission called Blistering Love. You need to complete this. You then get another mission called Holding On. Complete this too. The next mission will be the second conflict. Complete this mission to unlock A Like Supreme, which should pop up for you 24 hours of in-game time after second conflict. So at the end of this mission, guys, at the end of A Like Supreme, Kerry Udine will hand you the Archangel Iconic. Okay, so next up guys, we have the crash. This is given to you by a river after completing the mission of following the river. So this starts upon you completing the main stone mission of life during wartime. So do this. Now this next side mission you are waiting on could depend on your street cred level. So if this next mission doesn't pop up for you, progress again further and level up your street cred. So the next mission you want here is called I fought the law. This is where you meet river. Upon you completing this guys, you need to wait 48 hours in game for the next mission to pop up. That mission is called The Hunt. So in this mission guys, you are basically scanning a farm in search for somebody. But you need to progress past this mission to unlock the next. The next mission is where you get this iconic weapon. It's called Following the River. Here you need to wait 24 hours in game. River will then call you and you need to accept his request to help. So it's this mission of following the river, this is where upon you completing it, river gives you the crash weapon. Next up guys, we have the Lexington X Mod 2. So this is rewarded to you after you complete the side mission of Shoot to Thrill. This is found within your mega building apartment base. So go here guys, as you can see me doing on screen now, and if you haven't already, speak to Wilson. Here guys you have to get first place in that shooting range competition so I suggest you make a save before doing it because I do believe you only get that one chance. Now I do believe you have to get a score of 40 or above to win. Next up guys we have the Dying Knight. So upon completing the shooting to thrill side mission for Wilson he now becomes a weapon vendor for you. You can simply go to him guys and purchase this Dying Knight Iconic. Next up guys we have Skippy. So Skippy can be originally found uh, next to a body right here on the map. Now once you have Skippy you need to get 50 kills with him. After you've done this, he eventually will pop back up automatically and tell you he has info on his previous owner, Regina Jones. Now, upon you taking him back to her, she will, after many days of you skipping time, contact you again. From here, you can go back to Regina Jones and pick Skippy up. Keep in mind, 
he will not be as unique as he once was he won't speak to you anymore but he's now available for you to stash which means it removes that mission marker from him meaning you can put it in your stash to appear on your stash wall next up guys we have the bayako so this is rewarded to you from Wakako after you complete all her gigs within West Brook. Upon you doing these guys, she will add it to your stash. I have received information that Vortex's shard is on its way. You did not disappoint me. That deserves compensation. I am closing the contract and transferring your fee. Next up guys, we have the Seraph. This is rewarded to you from Padre aka Sebastian Ibarra, uh, upon you completing all of his gigs. His gigs take place within the Glen and Haywood area. Next up guys, we have the Bloody Maria. This is rewarded to you from El Capitan Reyes upon you completing all of his gigs. And these all I believe take place in Santo Domingo. Next up guys, we have the Blue Fang. This is a weapon you purchase from the weapon vendor within Jackson Plains, as you can see right here on the map. Next up guys, we have the Head Hunter. This is a weapon you purchased from a melee weapon vendor in West Windows States, as you can see right here on the map. Next up guys, we have Iconics that drop from suspected organized crime activities. These, what I would suggest you do is create a manual save before attempting each and every one of these. These are known to bug out. Okay, so first up we have the Buzzsaw. This is a crafting spec dropped by Yelena. 
so this is a suspected organized crime activity called Vice Control, located right here on the map. Next up guys we have the Psalm 11.6, this is also a crafting spec and it's dropped by Tom Ayer. This is a suspected organised crime activity called Just Say No. But in order for this one to appear you first have to complete the Vice Control suspected organised crime activity which rewards you the buzzsaw which is what we just covered. So get that one out of the way and this one should appear on the map right here for you. Next up guys we have the Moran Lab. This crafting spec is dropped by Anton Kalev. This suspected organised crime activity is called West Wind Estate, located right here on the map. Next up guys we have the headsman. This crafting spec is dropped by the Militech Mech. This suspected organised crime activity is privacy policy violation located right here on the map. Next up guys we have the Sovereign, this crafting spec is dropped by Shinobu Amea, this is another suspected organised crime activity called Modern Labour Market, located right here on the map. up guys we have the Ying Long. This is a craft inspector dropped by Denzel Cryer. This one is another suspected organised crime activity called Living the Big Life located right here on the map.
Next up guys we have the breakthrough. This crafting spec is dropped by Olga. So this one is a new boss, new rules, suspected organized crime activity and this one is located right here on the map. And lastly guys, we have the comrades, Hammer. This crafting spec is dropped by Darius Miles. This suspected organized crime activity is a rail located right here on the map. So what about the black market vendor? So this is a dude that comes with the Phantom Liberty DLC, a vendor you can go to and buy iconics that you may have missed. Now I know he sells weapons like the Sasquatch's Hammer, the Eretta, the Nihan and a couple of others but there's a few on this list that I've covered today that he definitely does not sell. But hey if you've missed any of these you can always go to this dude. Skip time by 24 hours to reset his stock and hopefully guys, he will showcase the one for you to purchase that you may have missed along your playthrough. And there we have it guys, all 30 iconic weapons which have a place on V's apartment building stash wall. Now some of these at the moment are bugged and won't appear on your wall, but sooner or later CDPR will fix these and they should appear on your wall. But there we have it. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, leaving a like really helps out. If you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. And hopefully, guys, I will see you on that next one.